Hi, thanks for watching. Um, please like the video and subscribe to the channel um, and check out our Instagram, which is renovating underscore vein underscore cottage. Put loads of updates on there. So, in this video, I'm going to be installing the plaster ceiling rolls. Uh, I'm installing 10 throughout the house, all very well, all the same. Um, I'm installing nine of them at the minute. One of the ceilings still needs plasterboard, and it's in a room that sort of still needs plasterboard and all together, so that'll be happening sort of in a few months' time. But I'm um, putting the other nine up today. I've already done eight of them, so this is the last one, but I thought, well, I'll do all the others, see what happens, see how I'll come across and everything, and um, any hints, tips, and what have you, I'll give you in this one. So, what we're installing is these. And this is apparently it's like an egg. We're putting the egg and dark coven up, and I'm going to have another video on the coven. Um, these are like a, an egg sort of type um, ceiling roll, which this is just a little scrap off cut of the coven, but you can see it's got the same egg shape in it. So that's that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go over the tools I've used, or the tools I've got, um, anything I've needed, and then I'll, I'll show you me putting this one up. Um, these are from a company online, I can't remember, it's somewhere based in Scarborough, like plastercoven.co.uk or something, but it's basically yeah, it's a coven and a coven company online, I know they're based in Scarborough. Same alright, these have all been alright. Um, a couple of them must have been cast fairly recently, I think, because you can see the damp, but uh, luckily I'll, I'll just leave the, the dampest one. Um, for the room that's not done yet, so it's not really a massive issue. Uh, the quality looks all right, no major, a couple of little sort of um, little sort of defects in them, but I think any sort of plaster mold you always get that. The Corbin's from the same company, and again, that seems fairly good. I've bits of marks here and there, but nothing I won't be able to, well, I haven't opened it all up yet, but up to now, nothing I wouldn't be able to sort out with a bit of plaster paris as I'm going along, literally little, little bit so. Anyway, so I'll show you the tools I've got and then we'll, we'll get this one put up. That's it, tool wise, obviously the plaster molding itself. Um, some plaster bar screws, ones that are long enough to go through the molding, through your plaster on your ceiling, and into a, a joist ideally. Sure, these ones are 4.2 by 75mm, they're being fine everywhere. Got the Corbin adhesive. This stuff I got from Wix, um, it's a bit of a grey colour. In hindsight, B&Q do one, uh, I can't remember what made it is, but B&Q do one that's a white. For the rest of the Corbin and everything else, I'm going to use the B&Q one, but I'd already bought a couple of bags of this, so I'll use this up. Um, but for, for future, I'm going to use the white, just, I think it looks neat as you go on. I know it's going to get painted and you're never going to see it, so it doesn't really matter. I just like the thought of it being white as I'm going. So that's that. Um, got a little old cup with a paintbrush in for finishing up later on. Got a flexible mixing bowl. Um, and a, I'm using a spoon to actually mix it with. Um, probably better off using a, a tool, but um, it's back in the paper. I've got a spoon. This is a flexible one that you can, when the plaster dries, you can sort of crack it out. Um, that's that. I've got a cordless drill, it's got a screw bit in there. Also, I've got a few drill bits. So, I've got a thin one that I'm putting through the Corbin um, for a pilot hole. I've got a thicker one that I'm using just to count the sink. Count the sink the screw heads into the plaster mold and we can add them later on. Um, and then I've got another one that I'm using to put a should lift it up. I've got another one that I'm using to put a, a hole through the centre for the electric cable to come through. Yeah, I've got a little terminal screwdriver for disconnecting the light. Um, obviously screwdriver left taking the light down. Um, like I say, you'll need your spatula for later on to tidy it up around the edge. And also, I like to use a piping bag. So I've got a piping bag here, normal one you'd use for icing or whatever. Um, and a bit of the adhesive. I mix it up and I put it in the piping bag. And I'll show you later on in the video 
get a nice finish around the edge between the rolls and the seal and using that method. Um, so I'll put that, that, that later on in the video. Um, so crack on now, what I'm going to do is, normally for the others I've had a dust mask on and, and stuff, but because I'm talking on the video for this one I'm not going to. Um, so I'm going to put a drill bit in this, put a hole through the centre of that, um, go mix some, mix some adhesive up, uh, and then get it stuck on the ceiling. Uh, the other thing on the ceiling, what we need to do, is find out where the joists are running now. I've plasterboarded all these ceilings, so I know roughly where all the joists are. I know there's a joist just to one side or the other of all the light fittings. Um, but what I'm going to, what the theory is, I mean these are quite light, so maybe it's not massively necessary. What I'm doing on each one, so there'll be hole in the middle for the light cable. Each one, I'm, I'm putting a hole here and here. Um, so I put a couple of screws through these and into the joist above. So it's got them couple of screws and he's the dog coming to see. Uh, it's got a couple of screws and it's got all the adhesive holding it up. Um, uh, whether it's fully necessary, I don't know, but I'd rather it not fall down. It hold it up nice and tight while the adhesive's setting anywhere in there. But now I'm just putting a bit of the adhesive over the top of the screw ends just to cover them up. And then when I come to decorate at the end, I'll probably put a little bit of plaster of Paris over the top of them as well, and then just sand that down with a bit of wet and dry just to fully finish it off. Um, but again, you can't, even just with the adhesive over, if it was painted white, I don't think you'd ever know unless you were like up the steps looking at it, so um, it's fairly good. Um, obviously, from an electrical safety point of view, you need to isolate your lights so nobody can turn them back on so you don't electrocute yourself. Uh, make a note of where the cables are coming out, the light fittings and all that type of thing. At the minute, I've just got a standard white pendant light fitting up and I'm putting the standard white pendant back up. Because like I say, we're still in the building stage and the house has loads of other work I'm doing. And you can have a look at, I've got loads of other videos on there, so I will look at all of them and see what's been going on. Um, but hopefully, summer, towards the end of the year, maybe we're changing all of the standard white pendants for nice, more chandelier type fittings. Um, but like I said, for now the standard pendants just go up. I don't want to put really expensive fittings up because they get covered in dust and ruin and while we're working in the house. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is drill a hole. Got a piece of scrap wood there. Drill there. This is a uh, 10 mil drill. It's basically just to make big enough for the wire. And these do have a little pin on the centre, so I'm putting the pin in the centre. Nice and slowly through, letting the drill bit do the work, and then I'm sliding over a little bit. It does go through the wire, but why not? I don't know if you can see there. This is this this is sort of the middle of damp, that's what you can see. So the white plaster on the edges to the thicker, it's a bit darker, so there's a couple of them like a bit heavier than the others. So I'm guessing um, some of them have already been made up in the stars where I've got a problem, a couple of must have cast fairly recently, but uh, I don't think it's an issue. Um, all our ceilings have just been skimmed, so everything's been skimmed, so there's no remnants of, um, there's no remnants of paint or wallpaper or all like that on there, so they should get a good fix in there. I've slightly scored around it with a, or I'm going to slightly score around it with a, a standing knife, but there's nothing there. Obviously, Depending on what, you know, if your ceiling was papered, you'd obviously have to cut, take the paper off or, you know, paint, you'd have to score it or whatever, make sure it's not going to come off. But in our case, it's nice, you can see on the wall, it's nice fresh plaster, so not so much of an issue. So I've done that, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get the steps, and I'm just going to remind myself where the joists are, I'm going to put a pencil mark, sort of where the joists are, just slightly longer than this. So once this is up, and see, right, the joists are running, and I'll put my little pilot hole throughs to, to put the screws up to fix it. Once we've found out the joist, I'll we'll go and mix a bit of, or I'll mix up a bit of um, adhesive, and we'll go from there. Right, I've just brought a work light in there, hope it'll be bright things a little bit. So our mark pendants, it's just the uh, two wires in the house, is all being rewired. Um, it's all, sometimes when they're doing it, rewiring. For cheapness, so sort of loop all the cables in, so they're looping from one light to the next light to the next light to the next light. It's called like three plate or ring mirror method, which is nice and cheap and easy to do when you're wiring the house. But it then means you have three cables coming down here. Um, 
six sort of connections to do with that some permanent life, switch life, new rules, makes it hard. So if you've got nice fancy chandeliers up, I would recommend that um, you get them to take it all back to a, a central location. So now as it goes back to a, a central junction box, uh, a big adaptable box, some dim rail and uh, and uh, all the connections in there, it's fairly easy to get to. So um, any maintenance down the line, you can get to them all. Each way goes back there independently. But the main plus side of it, you've only got one cable at each fit, uh, which makes it miles easier when you're putting fancy chandeliers up. You don't have all that, but it's a block connector here or knocking holes up to try and hide the wires and all that type of thing. So, um, disconnected. If you do have all the wires, make sure you know where they all come from. Now, I'm fairly sure there's a joist either here or here, um, running from the front of the house to the back. I just can't remember where. So what I do is I just take a screw and that, that's bit in there, so I know the joist there. So three holes, fit in each time. I know, I know the joists are running from front to back anyway, but I've, I've proved that there. So what I'm doing now is put a pencil mark so once the, um, the rose is up, that's off, figure it out a bit easier. Right, so Fairly straight, sometimes easy if you have a second person to stand at the end because the likely it is the joist should be running fairly square from you know either front to back to side to side however they're running. Um, but I think hit lucky there, so that's good. Got the tools nice and handy. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna knock up a bit of the DC. So I'll go and get me jugs for some water and I'll show you the consistency. Um basically going for no you describe it. Maybe it's like a dryish type porridge or like a dry cake batter type mixture. Uh, I'll, I'll show you anyway. Well, like I said, I'm not mixing up loads. I'm just doing enough for do, doing this one. It does stay wet for about 90 minutes. So if you wanted, I mean, you could mix up a lot, you know, enough to do two or three. But uh, for what it takes, I've been mixing up as more than if I've got a tea or a rest in between. I don't have to worry about it. So, so a little bit of water in the bottom of the bowl. It's a dust mask if you get if you're not talking on a video. A little drop, so that me specialist mixing spoon. See, it's that small of a quantity. Not really any dust anyway. It's getting wet straight away. Obviously, once it's wet, you're not getting dust. So this is a bit too wet at the minute, but I'm just making sure I mix it first before I add any more. Like I say, this, just because of the colour, I don't know if it's like a grey colour, I'm not keen on it. It stands out like a sore thumb everywhere. Um, for being white, being not fun. Well, at least with this, like, you, you know where you've got it, you can just be able to shoot it, it's fine. So, what I'm looking for is when I put it side on, it sort of sticks to the spoon or uh, spatula, whatever you use. It's a little bit wet, that, literally a uh, sprinkler. Any bit there, it's probably enough now, but we can mix up and see what happens. That's a 
suppose the plaster rose is nice shut in on the moisture out when you put it on and it's winter time and then it on doing this. It's uh, January so um, you know it's not red hot but if it was a summer time you might want to sort of adjust your consistency as required. Yeah, I think that's better. So you can see there it's on the spoon. It's not moving a bit but it's not not coming off unless I flip it off. So I think that's I think that's probably a lot better there. So we'll go with that. I say I say a thick porridge maybe. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it around the outside edge. Now I think you probably could just put dab blah but what it is the price of it. So I like to just put it around the outside. So I'm just evenly all the way around the outside to begin with. Could use me proper tool or me floor, you know, small tool, but it's fine. There's no tidy, I think, when you work on a small ball like this, just a small quantity. So I've got a fairly even amount all around the outside. I'm going to put a few dabs in the middle. Plenty of them everywhere. You can see I've near enough you what was in the bowl. Yeah. Worked up all right. Now. Let's get it up. The other thing I've done is I've put my cordless screwdriver and my screws on the steps so I can get them easy. Obviously if you've got a second person helping you, then that's fine. Um, so the wires through the rows, excessive just pushing up under the stairs, under the floor, sorry. So what I've done is I've put it lightly on the ceiling there. What I'm looking for is where the joist line runs. I'm looking to make sure it's not on one of the flowers. I want like a plainish bit of plaster ideally. Pushing it on, making sure where it's the same sort of distance off all the way around, which it's maybe with the adhesive underneath, it's maybe what? Two or three, maybe two or three millimetres sort of gap. Yeah, which is fine, that wire is still pushing out the way. Now on the earlier ones I did, I was using a prop, like a prop that you'd use to hold a piece of plasterboard sheet to the ceiling, but none of them have gone anywhere. So obviously <laughs> it's up to you, but the worst that's gonna happen here is it's gonna fall and pull on the wire. But um, it seems pretty good that stuff. So the next thing, pile the holes in, get them all ready for uh, this. I should have have my pilot all on here as well, my pilot drill bit on here as well, but I forgot. I don't think that. So I've got my pilot drill bit in now. Like I say, I'm looking, I know my joist running there. So that bit of the rose is just flat, there's no sort of burn, none of the leaf or anything on there. So you probably better have eye protection on as well. Other joists there. Let me put the a little flat bit. So they should be easy to patch them up in bits. So we've got the ceiling rows up. Um, just at the end of that bit of video then, I did um, use the, over, the larger drill bit just to drill slightly bigger holes um, just to make sure it was the top of the screws were recessed in. A um, little bit of a problem with the memory card there's a slight section missed out that shows that and it all so misses out me going around with the Python bag so um, what, I, what I did after I'd got it screwed up, I got the Python bag that you've seen earlier on in the video anyway but I got that. I went around the outside edge and just piped in some adhesive. So you need to use a piping bag that you'd use on a cake or if you don't want to have them, like a sandwich bag or anything to do. 
just paper the adhesive round the edge use the spatula to get it nice and smooth and then just with a light bristle paintbrush and a bit of water on it just go around it and that sort of tidies it up nicely and um, the paintbrush is also good if you get the adhesive on like the pattern bit and you can't get it off paintbrush and water you can brush it off and it, it gets it off nice and easy so it is uh, it's handy the paintbrush um, and then you can see on this bit of speeded up video I'm now starting to put the light pendant back up and I'll talk about that in the next section of video anyway. Back up now. So the brown, the first one, the brown, the blue one, which is the neutral. In this case, because it's only two wires, some anti blue is a switched lie. If, um, if you have the method where you've got six wires coming through, so just let yeah, say make sure you know what goes where before you start. And then the uh, earth, which got a bit of earth leaving on, just in the earth pen. This is obviously a plastic fitting, so it's double insulated, so it doesn't need an earth to the fitting, but uh, we'll be putting some nice chandeliers up later, which are metal, which probably will need an earth. And then just tighten the rows up for now. Like I say, it's not the the rows look brilliant, the electrical light rows, not so much. But um, like I say, it's pointless putting the nice chandeliers up yet. I've still got all the cobalt to do, it's all the paint, um, it's all sorts to do. So, um, but that's that's the ceiling rows up. That's it all done really. Um, not not really a lot more. If you did have any little chips, you could get them with a bit of a bit of plaster of Paris later on but this particular one seems alright um, so like I say hopefully you've got a few tips you've seen how we've done it I'm not a, a professional uh, well you've probably figured it out from the video I'm not a professional um, builder or anything just a DIY um, so this is just how I've done it in my own house I'm sure there's better ways to do it if there is stick it in the comments and I suppose then um, We'll know for next time we'll try them, them methods out. But like I said, thanks for watching the video. Please like the video if you've, if you've watched it. Please um, subscribe to the channel. It all helps us out. Um, like I say, I've got loads of other videos. If you go on the uh, Renovating Bain Cottage on YouTube, um, go on all videos. I've, I number them up at the end of them, like one to where we are. So you can sort of see how the houses come on from buying the house to we put fires in, we've done a loft conversion, um, like we're burning stone for them in by fires, and loft conversion, um, steel gone in for that, there's new windows gone in, plastering, radiators, bits of electric, everything, you name it. There's still plenty of stuff coming up, we've got a bathroom suite to fit, there's a coven to go up, um, loads, loads of stuff happening over the next year or so then there'll be all the decorating and stuff at the end so loads of stuff happening so please um please keep watching like i said before check us out on instagram as well i think if you're renovating underscore then underscore cottage and um, if you stick renovating then cottage in a google it generally brings something up as well so like that thanks for watching video give you a bit of a close-up See what I mean by the edge. I've piped into there, only a few mil, but I've piped it in. Gone round with the um, the paintbrush, and it's nice and smooth. Um, shame where the screw holes are. That is a little bit um, flush. It wants a bit more on the top, but again, I'll do that when I come to decorate. As long as there's no nasty bit sticking out, it needs to tidy that up later. But you can see there, it gives a, a greyish tinge that stuff. That adhesive, I wish it was white and just look neater in the meantime, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, pleased with that. A couple of the other ones just out of interest, so that's the hall. Another one in the hall. It's one of the land down. Another one on the land, no over there. One in the bedroom. Nothing in the loft, they're different type of light fittings. Um, look, there's one what is going to be a bathroom, so we've got one in here. One in another bedroom. 
And then there's one in the dining room downstairs, but I've got some stuff in there, so 